Hello YouTube and welcome back to Unitrader. We're going to continue our dive today into the free tools of TradingView, taking a peek at pitchforks. Before we begin, this is not financial advice and I am no financial advisor. This is for educational purposes only. Also, there is a uh, person who is uh, pretending to meet me in the comments, leaving people what WhatsApp numbers and whatnot, so that's not me. I will never leave you my WhatsApp number, nor will I ask for direct personal communication like that. But I will respond to you in the comments. And having said that, let's get into this. So the Andrews Pitchfork is a pretty old tool uh, with quite a bit of history. So there's a lot to get uh, into here. And I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. But this is going to be at least a 20 minute video and we're just going to scratch the surface. There is so much, uh, especially historical information that is so relevant to these, especially in the way that you pick your pivots. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's get into it. We've got four different pitchforks. You'll find them in the GAN and Fibonacci tool section. So we have a pitchfork, a shift pitchfork, a modified shift, and an inside, and all are very useful. So it's a three-click tool. We'll start with the generic. So uh, let's just pick a point here in the chart and go with it. So that is how you pull. So it's a three-click tool. You, you take a low, a high, let me just fix that and a low and then what we are going to do is look for validity of this pitchfork meaning are these levels respected so the construction of the pitchfork is what uh, really uh, is the defining factor of them uh, or the differentiation between them so they all have the same uh, fork really. The only difference is how this median line is calculated. So for the regular Andrews pitchfork, we'll just talk quickly about the construction. This is the median line. These green lines are the quartile lines and the blue lines are the top parallel and the bottom parallel, right? Or the parallel lines. So this is calculated very simply from the A point the median line is going to intersect the line from B to C at exactly the 50 percent mark so if we pull a Fibonacci retracement here you can see that it crosses right at the point 0.5 here okay now I'm just going to run through them quickly to show you the difference and then we will talk about applications quickly. So that's the normal pitchfork. The shift is going to, oh, I've got, let me apply default and get this background color out of here. So, you'll notice here that the slope is much less uh, severe, really. So, the median line is not starting from the uh, A pivot. Instead, what's happening here is, we're again going to pull a fib from the A to the B. And you'll notice that the median line comes all the way back in time to the beginning of the pull. So it's more time oriented than strictly price oriented. So in fact it's fully time oriented with, well sorry it's not fully, it's half and half. So the time is right at the beginning of the move and that's going to be the point five between the A and the B. So it gives more relevance to time really it does. So that is the shift. Now the modified shift is kind of in between the two. 
in terms of extremes. And the big difference here is that it is calculated at the point 5 of the A to the B, right in the middle. Also, there is a time aspect to this. So if we take a uh, date and range time from the beginning of our pull, you'll see that it's actually right in the middle of the time as well. So it pretty much what we're looking at here is it's, oh, it is a 50% move in terms of time between the A and the B. All right, and also a 50% move within the price action. Then the final is the inside pitchfork. So the inside pitchfork is much more extreme and it is great for ranging markets. I'll get into that after. But what we are looking at here is the median line is coming straight from the 0.5 and it attaches to the point C here. Sorry, not the median line, but the way the slope is calculated. So the median line here has no anchor in the back as the others do. The anchor is at the point 0.5 off of the uh, bottom parallel here. So this is great for trend reversals um, and, and trend confirmations, but we'll get into that in a second. All right, so applications. I'm going to use, uh, well, we'll just stick in the same time frame here. So we're on the daily time frame. I'm going to pull up a modified. So what are we looking for here? With all of the pitchforks, doesn't matter which one you use, except for the inside, a little bit different. But what we want here is to use these to validate trend and slope. So, you know, just because a, a market is moving up, uh, sometimes the slope is, you know, straight sort of up, very parabolic. Like, let's say we're in a massive bull market, it's going to be parabolically moving up, right? And this will help you kind of maintain a, an even keel and also give you an idea of whether the trend is remaining healthy, unhealthy, that sort of thing. So to get relevance from these, the old timers, they used a lot of different techniques and this is where this can get really, really deep and we can make, you know, at least a 48 hour video uh, regarding the history so there were many tools that they used that were kind of like the basis of this pitchfork and you know the median line is is the one thing um, but once they started developing the pitch then they also used a lot of different techniques to establish where to pull the pivots from and it is pretty intense like there's a lot of info starting from basic action reaction lines uh, you know, stuff that you guys can definitely find online, resources to do this. You can, there's also great books. Um, so if you're interested in that, leave a comment below and I will either make a more in-depth video or I'll refer you some, some literature. Uh, so what they really did was use past information. A lot of the times it was historical information to see if you could gain uh, an idea if this is going to be relevant or not. So let's assume that we've just put in this low and you know there's no more price action history past this point, right? So what they would do is use previous history to find any sort of validating factors for this. One great and easy method to do this without having to learn all of the Oh, I mean, it's a lot of stuff. You'd be my guest. Uh, in fact, I encourage it. If you start to fall in love with pitchforks, you know, go deep. It's a it's a pretty deep rabbit hole. 
But if you come into the settings and you extend the lines, it's going to take it from the pull and extend it back in time, right? So again, we've just taken our pull. We can't see any of that future price action. But if we look back here, we can see, okay, this, this has some pretty decent respect. Here's a touch right off a, a quartile line and respected. Here's another touch. What you see here bouncing around here between the median line and the quartile more respect here on the lower quartile the median line access support here if we go further back rejected there support here go all the way back and here we kind of start to lose a bit of respect but that is the beauty of the extending lines feature here okay So let me just get that out of here. So once you establish the validity of this, you would assume, and don't assume like wholeheartedly, right? Very dangerous assumptions in trading, but you would assume that this is going to be a valid range at least. And you start to look for respect within the pitchfork. So once we put in our low here, our C point, you see that we come up and we right away get rejected off the median line and right away come and find support here at the quartile. So this is a very good indication that you know, this, this is getting respected and there might be something to it. So we can use these lines, these, to look for support and resistance, right? So if you're touching off of the median, you know, expect this to be a floor and expect the, the next level, which is this quartile line, to be a ceiling, right? So if you can break that, you know, which happens a lot of times, uh, be prepared for that, right? But so we start to look for other factors, right? Other confluences. So if we, if we pull a fib from here, you see that the 0.5 and the quartile are very very close and you can assume that there might be some support here and at least get some some more support here from the 618 and the 66 if need be right uh, and start to build up a, again a storyline of why you should enter along in this area so definitely respected and what happens when we when we finally break out of this is there's no longer respect for the channel. Now from the inception of this channel you're looking at February 24th all the way to May 5th. So a good few months there of trading all within a pitchfork that you can use as extra confluence. Also you're really kind of looking at this slope to to continue. Now when we break out of it that's it the pitchfork is no longer in play. But I wouldn't erase it. I keep my pitchforks in a folder and I just minim uh, hide them. And once price kind of comes back up here, we'll see how it interacts with this pitchfork. It's got so much history already here, all the way back here, right? So don't, don't erase them, all right? One other thing I do quite a bit with my pitchforks, once I find an established pitchfork, or once I uh, validate it, I have some different templates and I incorporate Fibonacci levels into it. So this just helps bring an extra layer of information and depth to the pitchfork. Now you can do this, you don't have to do this. Uh, depends on how, how deep you want to get into these. Again, there are my settings I like for my shift. And my settings are all tweaked a little bit differently for all of my pitchforks. But you'll notice here that, so we're, we're getting past this quartile line here, and we're finding support at the, uh, at the, fib, at the golden level, basically, at the 6.6, six, right? Also, if we come out of this channel, oftentimes these upper uh, lines will act as support. You'll notice we fell out here, and this kind of gave us a little bit of, of support, was respected slightly here, then turned into resistance, and down we go. 
Now the inside pitchfork, I like to use it in areas that are really after big moves. So let's say the, the low that we've recently put in, in June. So what I like to do with these, and there's so many different ways to use pitchforks, so play with these. All right, so let me just get a good angle here. All right, so here's the low from June, uh, June 18th, the high from June 26th, and the low from June uh, 30th. So we had come down quite drastically, right? We're full on bear market mode and we're looking for a reversal, right? Or continuation down. So these really help me figure out what the market is, is doing in terms of, you know, is it acting normally? And what I mean by normally is like, every time you're looking at market structure, you want to understand like, where's the market trying to go? And is it, is it getting there in a healthy manner? Is it not getting there in a healthy manner? And by healthy manner, I mean like, is it just straight dumping and then straight pumping? Because that's not healthy, that's just volatility. Um, so are they, are they healthy corrections? Or is this just pure madness? So for the inside, right, we hit this low. And to get continuation, I would imagine that we are going to follow this slope down. And I say the word imagine because this is all possibilities, right? But this is how I use the inside pitchfork. So here's the C. You notice that, you know, you can't really call this uh, overly respected, but it's actually not bad. Uh, we, we reject off the top, find support, but then we break out of it. And as soon as we break out of it, that's when I'm inclined to think that this is more than just a quick, uh, a quick uh, pause in the down momentum. And so what I would do, I have my pull here from my A, B, C. I will delete this channel, this channel, sorry, this pitch, and I will pull a new one from the high to the low, and now the high that broke out of that. And so now if this is going to be a full-on reversal, I would like to see some respect for this. And there was very little. Very little. All right. So with both of these failed, I then resort to looking at the original I believe I pulled a, yeah, it was a shift. The original shift that I get from this area here, because it didn't follow the steep downtrend and it also didn't follow a steep uptrend. So I fall, you know, pretty much automatically into range mode and I put in a shift with all of my fib levels. And you can see the respect that this gets is uh, pretty awesome. So I'm again, not trading off of this ever on, really on, uh, on just a, a pitchfork. I mean, that's insanity, nothing. So pull a fib extension. Uh, we get to the top range here. We've taken out the one, two, seven and we're rejecting now that is not a phenomenal pull but you start to look for a confluence in other places all right so 0.5 also not great confluence let's take fit pull here from uh, not much there, but this is how we're, we're going to really be using these is, is just looking for confluence. And you see there's actually some, uh, this, this was a decent trade. This is on the daily chart, so these candles are, are pretty huge. 
see her price range. Even if you just got in on the body, uh, you're talking about 1.92% for the day. Uh, and that was off of the median line and also the golden pocket from this high to this low come into the golden pocket. We actually almost took out the, the 786, but we didn't touch it. So, so that's really what you're doing. Also, you, you know, you can get into your other tools, right? You can try some anchored VWAPs from below. Uh, that's pretty decent right there, my friends. Uh, and here you could actually, this was actually a very decent and not overly difficult trade. So you have our anchored VWAP off the low at the top of this golden pocket from the Jew, uh, July 13th to July 20th high, so low to high, and we come in oh, and we touch to the dollar the bottom of the golden pocket. So we have here, you know, three bits of confluence already. We have a pitchfork, we've got a fib pull, and our anchored VWAP acting as all acting as support. And now we're talking about even if you took it just off of the VWAP, it would have been massive. 19%. So these are the kinds of things you want to do with your pitchforks folks we plot them we find confluence for them and we look for really validation of trends and the pitch of the slope that these trends are going to be following right now once we fall out of it then again you look to other other forms of uh, pitches or look to not other forms sorry take other pulls so you'll see even when we fall out and then we get acceptance back in it's still pretty well respected we followed again and look at where the resistance is we reject off of that bottom line and now when we come back up you know this this could still provide some serious resistance so don't delete them like i said put them in your folder and keep them always, all right? Okay, other than that, I believe that's about it, really. So, again, if you want to uh, to see more content on Pitchforks, let me know. Or if you want, to, uh, I, will, I will suggest some resources. Just leave a comment below, I'll respond. Um, yeah, that is it, my friends. So... Have fun, be safe, and be well. I'll see you on the next one.